Welcome to the YFS Academy uh, Office Hour slash podcast. How you feeling, Tommy? How you feeling, JM? Feeling good. Feeling good. How you feeling? Hold on. I gotta get my I gotta get my headset right. Hold on. I can't hear you. Hear you. Doing great, boss. It's good. To, that's good to hear. Good to hear. All right. So so what you say, Tommy? I heard I said, JM. I, I said I was doing good. I was doing good. I was asking you how you were doing. I know you said last time it was a little a little tougher to get some working out done and stuff. Ah, uh, changed it up. So what I what I did was, I'm just lifting heavy now, instead of doing all the cardio. That cardio stuff was making my head hurt. I think I was too much of an caloric deficit, and that's never too good. So I dialed the cardio back and just exchanged that for lifting heavy, and I feel a whole lot better. So basically, the goal is to eat right, lift heavy, um, look great, have the beer come in, and then. And like life is good. Like, like you can't, you can't forget like, drink drink the water. I'm, I'm too. catching up to you. Like, damn, it's only been like <laughs> it's only been like three days, bro. That's three days of growth right there. It's only three days of growth. What you gonna do once I'm a month in? I don't know. I gotta go step my game up. <laughs> I gotta step my game up. <laughs> All right, so we, we're not going to have that much of an audience tonight, guys. I, I don't think the email and the notification went out properly, but that's cool, though. Sometimes it's better to have a show when it's just you and the co-host. So me and Tommy go and break some of these topics down. What you want to start with? You want to start with the, the student loan and the, and the property divorce scenario? Yeah, I'm going to start with that one. That one kind of caught me off guard, you know, being, well, it'll be three years this year. Um, but I never heard of um, what a community property. So, um, so I, I came across this article on Yahoo where it said that um, the the title just caught me. I'm getting a divorce and I have 80k of student loan debt. How should we split it? So of course me, I'm like, what you mean? How should we split it? Like, <laughs> wait, wait. So you don't believe like your debt is my debt, my debt is your debt, and all that. Yours, yours is mine. That 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 don't come in the cards. <laughs> well, so. I, I do. We live by that. So I, I believe, you know, I, I believe in that. But then once it just just hit different when, when I was reading it, though, I live it like was yours is mine, you know, and taking those vows. Mm -hmm. It just hit different when I was reading it. Like, I expect this to be split. Like, you know, um, it's just like your automatic. How, how should we split this? But as I started reading into it and I was like community, uh, community property, which is when, um, anything like when you accrue some kind of asset or debt in the marriage that, um, it is, is supposed to be taken care of by, by the both of you. So in this scenario, the husband, um, the, the couple had been married for, for 20 years. They had been together for 30 years they had three kids now what threw me off is she said homeboy wanted to be a stay-at-home dad though the kids were in daycare preschool and regular school so i'm like you want to be at home collect hey, on, you about, on you, about to, you about to have a whole male audience upset all right you gotta tread lightly on that comment no, I, all right go ahead finish no but i mean because then he says you want to be about, at no no finish finish sir he want to be, be at home. <laughs> he want to be at home and then not have to can, contribute to the household. So, so so you're saying that stay at home dads should not be allowed to have daycare. No, 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 aid. no, no. I'm not saying they shouldn't. So have what are you saying? Because it sounds like but stay at this, home dads are not allowed to have daycare to help. Nah, out. Nah. So what she was looking at, what this was looking like was he wasn't contributing nothing was expecting to take part of the pension, but then not help with the other financial responsibilities. So, so all right, so let's let's flip it on the other side of the foot, right? Say it was the opposite. He was working, had the pension, had a student loan debt, and she stayed at home and did the same exact things. Would you feel the same way? Now, I, I mean, I would feel the same way about that student loan part, no matter who who it was. Just well, what about like, the pension part? Your significant other who had daycare and everything, all the, the stuff that he mentioned in there, is it cool for that person to get half the pension and half the student loans too? Nah, see, like me, I'm like, where I feel like if I'm in those shoes, I'm like, I'm going to just... Look, you take, you take that student loan, I don't need the pension, and I'm going about my business. <laughs> All right. But if y'all married, right, and 
we don't know what conversations happened on the back end that had a person decide to stay at home, right? Because sometimes it might be like, yo, we got two kids. It don't make sense for you, the kids to to do X, Y, Z. Why don't you stay home and woo, 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 right? And maybe that arrangement was, was cool for the first five years and the last 15 years it became an issue. But does that mean that person is no longer entitled to said assets that you were allowed to accumulate because they were taking care of a non-financial position? You see uh, what I mean? Like yeah. you got roles where you got breadwinners and like if it's basketball, not everybody is Michael Jordan. Not everybody is a scorer. Shooters going to shoot. Some people going to give you 10 assists, though. They're going to give you 10 rebounds. They're going to play hellified defense. They ain't going to win the dunk contest. They're not going to be in the all. They're going to be in the all star game, but they're not going to be a superstar. Right. Because people love scores. So just because sis was making, bringing in the donuts and, and sometimes cooking the, sorry, bringing home the bacon and sometimes cooking it don't mean he ain't entitled to some of that pension. That, Come that's on true. now. But, I mean, yeah. it, truth be told, on uh, if it was on the other side of the coin, if the, the shoe was on the other side of the foot, we probably won't be saying nothing. I don't know. So, so if I so this part is say that the kids live with me and I support them fully and I pay his rent at twelve hundred a month as you should, <laughs> as you should. I'm I'm, just, I'm, I'm, he need to be getting fourteen hundred. For, <laughs> he need more. City he need a meditation it. budget. He the need medi- more. Go the, off, that sir. Mental health. That mental health budget. <laughs> Nah, I mean, but the the biggest part for me was, was the loan. I think just just that loan, I just wasn't familiar with community property. So I think that's what just caught me off guard with like, okay, we expected to split this. How are we supposed to split this 80K community property like that? But um, it makes I sense. I mean, shit, the saying. same way you would split if you had a paid off house. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to sell the house and you're going to get a portion of it. And I'm going to get my half. And then the same thing with the debt. Like, we're just going to put whatever, just assets minus, li- minus out liabilities. So I think in this scenario, if she doesn't gives up, give up part, part of the pension, there's probably other assets in which he gets, right? So if her pension is protected, then she's going to get whatever else residual off of it. Or if she keeps the pension, then she keeps the debt, right? Because if they don't got no assets and he just leaving with nothing, then you got to keep the debt because you got the asset, you got the pension. Right, right. That makes sense. Now, I honestly, I don't I think it's they brought up the community property thing, but there's only what Louisiana, Arizona, California, Texas, Washington, Idaho, Nevada, New Mexico, Wisconsin. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine states that have the community property laws. But I honestly think if they were married in a non-community property state and they got divorced, to me, it's simple. Assets minus liabilities, you split it in half. Unless you there's some form of agreement in place. All that other stuff she was talking about, oh, he ain't work and he the kids was in that don't mean nothing. Y'all was together. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like nobody you wanted to be Michael Jordan. Like I'm over here. I'm going, I'm Steve Kerr. I'm still I, I'm I'm still gonna get a ring. Right, right. So that's the thing. Like it's it's weird reading that because that came from like that was like the woman's perspective, right? It was a uh, like it was she's clearly a successful person that was able to take care of the family, but it's just weird hearing her like, oh, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. And I'm all like, well, what you mean? Like, how to how was you able to do what you would do if he wasn't there? Yeah. Like, just because your spouse doesn't bring in a serious amount of money or contribute financially to the household does not make them a lesser individual, man or woman. It's just weird in our society based off the roles that we tend to portray and have. Uh, that's what I would say on that one, but yeah, man, you was you was dancing on it. You was uh, I was gonna ready to say, do we need like some some music to say Tommy getting ready to go off the rails? He was like, no, you, you saying that man didn't deserve what he what he no no. For? I was just no no no. I was just trying to make it, under understand it. Like I said, I'm new <clears throat> new to this game, so I'm like community uh, community property, like the pension. I I didn't know how none of that works, so. Yeah, I don't I don't think that see that's protected from creditors. I don't think it's protected from your spouse though. Like you I don't think you have to liquidate it, but you gotta make that spouse whole. Like you're not gonna be able to, you know, get that off with a million dollars in the pension and we ain't got nothing. 
right technically there's some ownership to that particular pension and whatever i guess whatever they agree in a divorce is what they agree with yeah uh, I was, yeah just that was just to touch on the, the student loan you know carry over from student loan last week finances and relationships oh yeah because we did have that question where she had three hundred eighty thousand in student loans and he was like nah I ain't no, trying to marry. Married, so now think yeah. about it right if if he was in a community property state he automatically taking half of those. Yep. It, it changes the question before marriage. It does, though, at least. Yeah. Not afterwards. So All right, what, what else we got on here? We've got a uh, it looks like uh, I don't think we can say uh, the, 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 the C word or the P word on these aren't curse words, but like re- regarding the illness. I think if we didn't post this on YouTube, we might get flagged. But um, yeah. it's funny how there's no longer any talks of a. Uh, of the disease thing that's going around. Like, even though I'm vaccinated, even though I got, I didn't, I got the booster. I got that. I wore the mask and all that stuff like that. It's like disappeared. Yeah. So one thing with me, I know my brother, he had uh text me, you know, James Harden got to Philly. So going, going to uh Sixers website in the Wells Fargo center is, is they're relaxing all, um, you know, uh, verification for for said illness um Mm. and relaxing you protocol um and for me it just kind of clicked as around oh it's playoff time so (laughs) (laughs) something i mean they the super bowl just happened without an issue right i mean that was a mass mass gathering uh playoffs definitely a lot of money involved It, it it was it's just interesting. It was like, dag, like we spent like two years basically in some form of jail. And then all of a sudden it was like, eh, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a weekend. Like we woke up and Olivia, the, the school was like, yeah, that's no longer, we're no longer doing. It. So I, what I think is, what I think is happening now is probably, um, they probably ran the numbers on the mortality, the mortality rate, like what an insurance company does. Like, all right, we already know certain people going to unlive, unlive, uh, with this there's no sense in hindering and holding people to this particular standard anymore i don't think anything changed as far as the science or as far as it being spread or what now i think it's more so of a wide acceptance of there's going to be some mortality mortality that comes with this and it probably doesn't make sense any longer to hinder or hamper businesses now you said the playoffs i think it's the economy you can't have seven and a half percent inflation, and it's probably higher than that. They just do funky numbers. Gas rising, and then tell me that uh, as a business owner, you can only service X, Y, Z a number of people. I think outside of like big sports business, that has a little bit of push, but I, I think it's just like the overall economy stuff. Like how how does your economy? How does our economy thrive? If it's if there's restriction, you see what I mean? It's kind of like, well, if we were already bad and now I can only service 25 percent of my customers, we're going to be really, really bad. And what's going to happen is the same thing. That's what I assume is happening. Prices and stuff is going to go up like we went to Chick-fil-A today. I'm like, man, Chick-fil-A was twenty dollars. I went Chick with two people. And I'm not a big dude like that. Like Chick-fil-A, twenty dollars. Fast food is twenty dollars, people. Fat twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. They not. They not serve it. Uh, what else? What else is high now? Uh, gas. Yeah, gas, gas is- gonna be crazy. We we have four dollars for premium right now. I guarantee you, it's gonna be like six dollars as long as the the war is uh, raging on. With yeah, we have Ukraine four, and uh, Russia. Four seventeen in Jersey for for the premium. They slid premium that petrol. Super. It it was slick too. It was just like you just woke up the, to. A small little headline. Yo, no, no more, no more. Go on, disappear. So I, I think the 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 interesting thing with with that, and then I think New York because I'm up here in, in Jersey. New York is in an interesting spot with with like the sports and relaxing the the mandates because they laid a lot of people off. So it's there. I think they they have to, in my opinion, I think they have to kind of ride that one out that that decision um because how does it look um i I get for the economy um but when you you change it for 
the the key player that that we all hear about from New York, Kyrie Irving, mm. uh, being unvaccinated, and then you talk about people losing their their jobs because of the mandate. So I think New York is in some very interesting uh, shoes right now. You had a good point, like certain states, right? Like there was an exodus from New York and California. That's why the rents in freaking Texas and Florida are so high. So they're taking their big money salaries and they moved to the South and they're working remotely. So do you also think this is also going to mean that people are going to have to go back into the office, right? So if there's no mask requirements, no mask mandates and certain sectors of the world kind of got blown up due to the remote living situation, the remote working situation, do you now think this turns into, okay, bet it's uh, apparently it's okay for us to come back into the office. So what now, what happens to all those people who've been working from home for the last two years? Like, think about it for a second. You're like, yo, we got, you got to now commute with $7 gas 30 minutes into the office and be in front of Jane from accounting who you don't like. Is is that going to go well? Like, how, how does that work? I I think that's going to be be a rough transition because one I think they're going to get a lot of pushback because it's I've been able to do my job from the house so why do I need to come back into the building to get this same work done? You start questioning things like what you mean like am I not efficient? You like your, your whole life your whole schedule changes like when you work from home like right now y'all don't know if I even got pants on right now I do <laughs> but you don't know right when you in the office that's a felony. <laughs> and, and it's a little bit different thing. I was thinking about it now. I was like, man, my commute in DC was crazy. Like when I, if I tried to drive to work, it was a minimum hour and a half to two uh, to two hours. I can take the train. That's a minimum hour and a half. So do I really want to give up three to five hours of my day and to be stuck in traffic just to be into the office to be less efficient? I think a lot of jobs are about to run into tough issues with people just not wanting to come back into the office. Like once you get a taste of your own, making your own breakfast, come on, man. Like you ever had that? You make your own breakfast and then you go outside and you eat somebody else. You eat the fast food breakfast. You'd be like, yo, what am I doing to myself? You feel disgusted. It don't hit the same. It don't hit the same. Like that home cooked meal is great. Like being able to, to, to people who are working from home, being able to take your kids to the bus stop. That's huge. Like think about it for a second. When I was commuting, if it's a five hour, two hour commute each way, let's say hour and a half each way, I got to get up really early. I'm getting back really late. You seeing like this much of your family. <laughs> like uh, sometimes the bread is not worth it. So I'm curious if it's that too. It's kind of like. Especially after two years of you, you seeing your family for two years because we on we on lockdown and then to say, oh, I got to go. Especially if you enjoy your home situation. If you like your family, I'm about to right. say some people, <laughs> some people that they, they was going to prison. Some people would rather go to work to, to, to get a break from the fam. Well, one thing I would say this, right? When you're working and you're away from the house, you get to miss somebody, right? When you always up under them, that could be tough, right? So sometimes you might need to go work in another room for eight to 10 hours and be like, yeah, I can't. So, so you can have the feeling of missing that person because you you could be just so close to everybody that you it just becomes routine and you don't you're not excited whereas before you were excited for the weekend you were excited for friday nights and yada 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 so it's it's a give and take i would rather deal with the the latter than the former though i would rather not commute same same i had a 50 i had a 50 minute commute when i was um jesus christ so that's that's two hours out of the day right there two hours out of the day and you gotta have and you gotta have a nice car that's the other thing. You can work from home and, and have a crappy car and you cool. Like gas wasn't truly bothering me like that. You know, I'm not, you know, sorry for the people that it does because I drive like a thousand miles per year now. Like <laughs> my car, had, I, I had my oil change from last January was the same oil change that I had. I know I'm, I'm doing the car thing wrong, but I, we only put 1500 miles on your car and you got synthetic. I was, I was, I think I could make a year without an oil change, which is crazy. You just winning. Hopefully the dang car stay alive. Um, all right. So I think we touched on gas, though. I think it's going to be just as bad as 2008. And please don't go out and do what I did. When gas prices get high, y'all, don't go out and buy a Prius. The Prius was cool, though, but 
just stick with the car that you like. <laughs> like if you if you're a driver, be a driver. Don't 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 make a, a long term decision based off of short term pricing. And that the same thing I say with real estate, the same thing I say with gas and cars. Like just because the housing market prices are going up, don't go buy anything just to get a house. Like you got to live in it. You got to understand your neighborhood. Same thing with your cars. Don't go out there and go get anything because gas prices are high right now. They're going to go back down and you're going to regret it. I like my Prius, though. Samuel L. Blackson. That's what I called it. <laughs> it was a black Prius. With, as lucky cheese was, that thing lasted forever. Since 2000, we bought it brand new in 2008. I think we got rid of it two years ago with like 130,000 miles on it or something like that. I think it was a beast. Still getting hella gas mileage on it. Um. All right, so let's move more into the, the 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 tech. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on that before we get into like the technical part of things? Like as far as uh, I wanted to cover stock splits and um, elaborate a little bit more on how to make your kids rich. No, I think that's that's what the people want to hear. How to how to get get rich and get the kids rich. <laughs> I'm gonna turn so, it over. Let, let's start with the stock split one though first though. So um, let me bring up my little notes that I hear. So uh, as we all know that Google is proposing to have a stock split in June. They said that um, on their earnings for the January earnings. So what a stock split is, is essentially is when a company breaks up their existing shares to create a higher number of lower value shares, right? So one popular stock split was Apple. They did, they did like five of them in their future, but... Apple broke up its existing shares into multiple lower value shares. So typically you'll see like a two to one stock split or a three to one stock split. So if you got 10 shares right now and they do a two to one, they're going to give you 20 shares and it's going to lower the value of the stock by two. Same thing. If they do a three to one, you got 10 shares. Now you have 30 and they take the value and they divide that by three. Now, if you think of it like a pizza, right? When you cut a pizza into smaller pieces, the size of each piece is smaller, right? So you normally got four slices or eight slices, but if you cut it into 16, it's a little bit smaller slices, but the total amount of pizza stays the same. So the value of Google is going to remain exactly the same. You just have more shares of it. And what it does is it makes people who say, oh, I can't afford Google, it's $2,600. But now they do a five to one, a three to one, a seven to one stock split. And this person says, oh, Google's $100. I can afford it now. So it, it allows retail investors to come in and buy it up. Now, here's the weird thing about stock splits and things like that. It's just psychology of the stock. Like the book value didn't change. The earnings didn't change anything like that. But nowadays, you can buy fractional shares, right? So you can go buy Google right now, even if it's at like a $2,600 share price, and you'll have a fraction of it. So if you think Google is going to go up and it's a it's a company that, you know, full disclaimer, a company that I own, company that I'm looking to purchase more of if it goes down, please believe it, because um, they are a beast. Then if you are a firm believer in Google and you plan to hold it long term, I wouldn't say you do like a short term trade one year or something like that, then you are probably better off purchasing now um, than waiting for the split. Now, what am I doing with Google? Did I just jump out the window and purchase it? No. Um, I like to keep it simple. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of low cost index or ETF funds. I think you should have a two prong approach. 80 to 90% of your money should be in some form of ETF or index fund, low cost, no load. So for example, some very popular ones are VTI, which is the total stock market, VU, which is the S&P 500, SCHB, which is the total stock market for Charles Schwab. I'm in that. Or if you want to go to index fund route, SWPPX or SWLGX, which is like a growth fund. Set it and forget it, right? So take your number, whatever you're going to invest in, 200, 300, 500, and you invest into this low cost index. Because Google is in the S&P 500, you're going to have a little bit of Google. Um, if you get the growth fund, you're going to have a two or 3% of your purchases into this fund is going to be into Google anyway. So you're going to have some exposure. But then another thing that I do is I set aside some money for large drops, right? So if Google was to drop by 500 points, even though I'm automatically purchasing every month in my auto investing plan, I have cash set aside. Oh, let me grab some big shares of Google right now uh, when it gets lower. So let me bring up a chart to show you exactly what I mean. 
And some people will say this is like time in the market. This is like a little hybrid approach to that. Um, Because in reality, you know, time in the market is always better than timing the market. So I kind of do like the best of both worlds approach. So let me share my screen to show you what I'm talking about. So, and are you able to see my screen? Yep, I can see it. Once upon a time, Google was $3,000 a share. And this was around February 2nd. So the average person, they're like, yo, that is too much. I can't afford Google. So they look at stocks and look at price when they really should never be looking at price because the price doesn't matter. The $3,000 number is just arbitrary. If you have $100, you're still going to have $100 of value of Google, right? So if you have $1,000, you're going to have $1,000 in value of Google, whether it's at $3,000, whether it's at $100. So if you truly believe in a company, that's what you do. So one thing that I do is uh, like, so let's use this point. So I purchased a little bit here. So my automatic investing, let's just say it does it on the fifth, right? So I'll purchase a little bit on January 5th, whatever the price was. So I purchased some at $27.50. And then on March 5th, I'm sorry, February 5th, I purchased a little bit. February 5th was a um, weekend. So the 7th, I purchased a little bit at 27.82. So that's like my automatic investment. Then I have some money set aside for big dips, right? And what I mean by big dips, I like to look at Google and you see this little purple EMA line. I just track it and I say, well, Google very rarely trades near this particular line. Let me um, clear up this chart for you. So if you look at this line, 200 EMA is estimated moving average. So I'm on the daily chart. So basically it's taking, it's tracking the last 200 days of Google, right? So if you look at this chart, it barely, it, some during coronavirus, right? It touched around that time frame, which would have been a great time to buy, right? Cause you'd been buying Google around 1300, like that's a W and then went to 3000. So I look for things like this where where Google touches. So even though I have the automatic investing going, if I look at my chart here, it's like, okay, Google touched below the 200 EMA. I did make a big purchase around this 2,500 mark. So what am I doing? I'm consistently buying, but if I'm able to buy the dips with a little bit more money directly for a stock that I care about, I'm able to lower my cost average. Um, but either case, when it splits, right? So Apple did a seven to one split. And when Apple did their seven to one split, their stock price, let me bring this up here. Let me bring up Apple. So when Apple did their seven to one split, where's my nudes? So they did a four to one split on August 28th. And then they did a seven to one split on August 28th. 2020, I believe they did. I'm oh, sorry. They did a four to one split on August 28th, 2020 and a seven to one split on June 19th, 2014. So Apple stock seven to one, I think it was like a thousand dollars or something like that. It went down drastically as far as their pricing point. So in August, they did their split as well. And they dropped down to like 90 something. Now they're all the way back up to 163. So Apple used to be a whole lot more. So the split makes a lot of people want to jump in and do those things like that. But in reality, you could have just kept buying Apple. But I would say kind of do the same thing. Get your long-term index fund, right? And then monitor the charts. I like to run a 200 EMA. Anytime Apple touches around this line, I want to get in. <laughs> like I want to. So 154 have been a great purchase price for Apple. Um, this was seems to be February 25th, but it went low around here. It was almost touching. The last time it truly went under the EMA was around 2020 of coronavirus time frame. Um, so that explains stock splits. That explains how I purchase things. Now let's get into uh, the making your kids rich thing. Um, I like to just keep this very, very, very simple. Another way I like to call this is like legacy investing. One thing that you can do is keep it very, keep it, keep it simple when it comes to the kids. The longer you are in the investment, the more time you have to allow compound interest to work. And because your kids are so young, they don't need to touch this money at all. So what can you do? You can open up, go to your favorite brokerage. It could be Charles Schwab. It could be Fidelity. It could be T TD Ameritrade. It can be Vanguard. That doesn't matter. You have two ways that you can do this. You can open up a 
regular brokerage account in your name and you're just kind of investing on behalf of your child or you can open up something called a custodial account a custodial account is a an account in your child's name that you can control until they're 18 years old most folks do the custodial account but if you think your kid is going to act funny once they become 18 and older and it's just take the money and run with it just keep it in a regular brokerage account as well the main thing that's going to be ma that matter here is, is the amount can you do 50 can you do 100 can you do 200 and i just want to show you the numbers of what happens if you essentially take that amount for your kid set aside 50 bucks a month or 100 bucks a month until they're 18. let's 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 show the math and i do this with olivia as well and kinsley also are you able to see my screen now Yep, I can see it. So we're going to do something called time value of money. I'm going to show you how your money is going to increase over a certain time frame. Now, on average, the stock market has gained 11.5% since 1929. That's counting the S&P 500 has. That's counting in all the wars, all the negative stuff. Woo, woo, woo. But we're going to use more uh, lower numbers. In the last three years, last year it did 28%. The year before that, it did 31%. And the year before that, it did 18%. But we're only going to use 8% for our numbers. So if we, a present value is the value of what we have right now, you're going to say zero and payments are how many payments you're putting in annually, monthly, so on and so forth. So we, if we use the $50 amount, you can say 50 times 12, we're putting in 600 bucks. So the question is, Hey, Dom, if I put in 600 bucks a year for 18 years for my kid, as soon as they're born, because I want to have a college education fund for them, how much would I have? If you gain 8% a year because you're in VTI, VU, SCHB, or anything like that, you will have $22,000 by simply just putting 50 bucks aside. I would say this, start with just the 50. I think everybody can probably find or can eke out, depending on your budget and where you live, 50 bucks. So if you knew that your measly 50 bucks a month, $600 a year, return it to 22,000, you probably will end up doing that. Because think about it. If you just save 600 bucks a year for 18 years, that's only 10,800. So where's the rest of that coming from? You made half of your money by simply investing it. So let's just use that same energy, right? So say you say, you know what? You're talking to your kids. You say at 18, they got scholarships. They're not going to use it for school. They're not going to touch it. And then you have a conversation with them. You say, you know what? This is the money that we're going to use to change our family tree. So you have a conversation with your daughter or your son. You say, listen, just keep it going, right? Keep it going for the next six. Just keep putting 50 in, you know, so on and so forth. Now, what happens if they just do that for another for 40 years in total? What does that little 50 bucks turn into? Sorry about that, y'all. $155,000 off the 50 buck number. It's not bad, right? Let's say you were able to do 100 bucks. What does 1200 bucks get you? 310,000 if you can do 100 bucks. So you, you so the math comes in by you creating a habit of investing over just spending it. It don't have to be 1000 bucks, it don't have to be 2000 bucks. The more the merrier you have, but the may you, the way you make your kids risk is by starting as soon as they're born, starting young and explaining to them why it's important to keep this going. Because I can tell you this right now, knowing what I know now, I would have love, I would have love to be, I'm almost 40, 40 years old. My mama put $100 aside. She said, you know, you know what's up for your 40th birthday? I'm going to give you the legacy account to take over. So now I'm starting the game with 310000 And then more importantly, if you want to change the family tree, your family tree, think beyond yourself a little bit. Like say you have the conversations at the dinner table about the importance of investing, about the importance of keeping this going. Maybe your kid takes a little bit out to buy a house, but the mindset is we're going to put it back in and they keep it going for their kids, right? So let's just take this out to 80 years, right? Your grandkids are now using this money. In 80 years, that 100 bucks, turn, that 12, 100 bucks a month turns into $7 million. So two generations, you're two generations removed from being a million, from millionaires, from changing your family tree for life. So think about that for a second, Tommy. I mean, if your grandparents put the hundred aside, your parents took the hundred, and then now you are coming into seven million at twenty years old or thirty years old, would things be a little bit different? 
Things would be a lot different. Power of 100 <laughs> and that's $100. I think a lot of people kind of lose sight of this. Like, let me um stop sharing my screen. I think a lot of people this day and age, they want to work in the microwave. And it's kind of like everything on social media is so fast. Everything is, oh, I got to get the bag or I got to get the business credit so I can do this. Or I need to, to, to be in 17 million different businesses. Well, that's cool. But as you're getting it, all I'm asking is you just take 100, 200, just put it to the side. Just $100 is nothing to you because you got 17 different streams of income, right? Just put this $100 to the side and say, you know what? I'm going to make a, I'll have a conversation with my family and say, this is what we're going to do. All I'm asking y'all to do is keep the 100 going. You keep the 100 going, your grandkids are having 7 million to start with. They keep the 100 going. I can keep going with it. If they keep the hundred going, your grandkids, grandkids are a different level. Now, everybody who's coming into life as long and coming into the family, as long as they're not, you know, idiots with their money. And typically that happens once you get a few generations removed, but at least you give people some of, you give your family some advantages. And um, yeah, that, that's how you make your kids rich. That's how you build your legacy fund as well. Keep it simple, hundred dollars a month, automatically invested into the, to VTI or VU, don't got to even get sexy with it. Don't got to pick individual stocks. The name of the game is time in the market. You can do the same thing with Bitcoin too. Buy $100 of Bitcoin a month, let it roll. Same thing. Just keep it going. It, it's, it's not, it's such a small amount to some people that it, you should be able to do it because the end game is so long. I think a lot of people want the results now and not, not really looking at the 20 year horizon where you're going to be A-OK. -okay. Cool. Um, hope that made sense. <laughs> All right. So uh, I think we had a, a, twist, a question from Patricia. Let's bring Patricia up to uh, answer her question okay. if she's still here. Hey, Patricia, how's it going? Are you there? Don't forget to unmute yourself. Uh, I think she might have. I think she might have timed out. Cool. So, Tommy, did you have any questions on the legacy investing, the making your kids rich uh, setup? No, nah, I mean, for me, that is, is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And it's you make it so simple because even just getting into it, coming out of school, being young, I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, you got to get after it, have this, that, the third. And it's hundred dollars a month. I'm like, man, if I, I, I work jobs since I was, I don't know how old. And I'm like, I could have been putting a hundred dollars a month up for a long time. Like, so it's just, it's, it's good knowledge to, to have now. Um, it's just real simple. It's not about hitting that home run as we always talk about is base hits, base hits. And that's the, the safest way. A hundred dollars a month, $50, even that 50, uh, looks, I would say start at the 50, start at the 100, and then what's going to happen is you're going to get used to it. I think my, my mom was doing it where we, we, we had the thing where she – this was the tough part for us, right? When I say us, my, my family, people who kind of look like me, stuff like that. Like we're – saving is one thing, right? We, we have a low savings rate, but investing is a whole different piece. We kind of stay away from it. It's like, I don't know what that is. So what we end up doing is she had enough money into savings where I say, hey, instead of saving it just in your checking account, why don't we just move, put it over here, right? And just let it grow. She's been doing that for like the last couple of years. She looked at it the other day. She was like, oh, I, I forgot I was just putting that over there. She was like, oh, that double? Yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't do nothing. I'll just put it in an account. The same thing you're doing with your savings. Just put it into the investment account. Let it ride. You're going to wake up 10, 20 years from now. You're going to be cool. You're going to be good. Like, oh, I'm glad I did that. One one thing I want, I always say this. One thing I wish I did was I wish I would have started earlier <laughs> because it's kind of like Olivia and Kinsley. They, they're going to be way, uh, by the time Olivia is 25, she's going to be way better off than hopefully you know, by the time she's 30, she should be better off than what we are doing now. And she ain't even doing nothing. So imagine, so imagine if I started earlier. But I think we just get so wrapped up into looking a certain way and, and, and wearing the wealth instead of building the wealth. That don't make any sense. You look at any successful, wealthy person, investor, they have long-term investments set aside. 
or certain long term that they're consistently doing every month or every week that's going to bring them wealth. This is just one easy, simple way to do it. And if you need the money, you don't have to sell your stocks. You can just take a loan against your portfolio and use your money in that regard. And that's what we talked about last week. So you can check out last week's call as check we covered that I'll one. show you how to do that. <laughs> All right. So I think this was a good call, man. Let's wrap it up here. And we're going to see you guys next Tuesday.